everybody. Welcome to the D. Louise book series. I'm Christina K. Arias, T-I-N-A. This is where we read books and talk about books. Uh, no special effects, nothing like that. I am practicing. Um, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you. I'm practicing. We're doing Donna and uh, Donna, Victoria Thompson and... Um, don't forget, we're doing, uh, we're finishing up the Women's Murder Club, Patterson's Women Murder Club. Don't forget uh, Flashback Mondays, where we're doing Romantic Time Book Review. That magazine is just fantastic. I talk about all different books from all different genres, so please shoot in that for that. Don't forget Star Trek Fridays and If Then Fridays. And that's what this is. This is If Then Fridays. Um, I hope I've, I, I'm a little discombobulated here. Um, in fact, I think I've missed one. Just give me a second here. Okay, so you're going to have to forgive me a little bit. Uh, I got a little carried away with this. Um, and I'm not very organized. Uh, I've been planning this for a month and I'm still not organized. So that tells you how long it takes me to get organized. Come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. She doesn't like being on camera. Say hello. Come on. So, I've been planning this for over a month. Uh, I've got about 50 books here, uh, so you'll have to uh, bear with me here. Um, so this is If Then, and this is Friday afternoon, so I hope you'll be here to uh, watch this and enjoy this and get some reading ideas. Um, if you like this author, then you might like that author. Yes, ma'am. So um, if you like Patricia Briggs, Mercy Thompson, Moon Called, where's my glasses? We like werewolves. Oh, my glasses are foggy. And I've got the wrong shirt on to do this. Um, it's a little chilly in my house today. Um, even though it's April, I'm freezing. Um, Mercy Thompson's sexy next door neighbor is a werewolf. She's tinkering with a VW bus at her mechanic shop that happens to belong to a vampire. Or a fae. It might be a fae. Uh, but then Mercy Thompson is not exactly normal herself, and her connection to the world of things that goes bump into the night is about to get her in a whole world of trouble. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, 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 ding. I can't remember the last time she's done all 12. She usually stops at 9. Wow. You'll have to check out my New Year's video for her identity. But she usually stops at 9. But she always, 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 always chimes during one of my videos. I do not know why, but that's what she does. Every single video, no matter what time of day or night, she chimes. So, Patricia Briggs. Moon Cobb, book one. And um, book two, Cry Wolf. Anna never knew werewolves existed until the night she survived a violent attack and became one herself. After three years at the bottom of the pack, she's learned to keep her head down and never, never trust dominant males. Then Charles Cornick, the enforcer and son of the leader of the North American Werewolves, came into her life. Um, blood bound. Mer Mechanic Mercy Thompson has friends in low places and in dark ones. And now she owes one of them a favor since she can shape shift at will. She agrees to act as some extra muscle when her vampire friend Stefan goes 
to deliver a message to a mother of his kind. And book three, Hunting Ground. Anna Lathan didn't know how complicated life could be until she became a werewolf and until she mated Charles Cornick, the son and enforcer of Bran, the leader of the North American werewolf. And just a couple of extra uh, mentions. Iron Kiss. Mechanic Mercy Thompson can shapeshift but her loyalty. When her former boss and mentor is arrested for murder and left to rot behind bars by his own kind, it's up to Mercy to clear his name whether he wants her to do it or not. And um, we're going to be talking about some of these other authors. Patricia Briggs, Anna finds a new sense of self when Son of Werewolf King comes to town to quell unrest in the Chicago Pact. Inhuman by Eileen Wilkes, and I don't think I pulled her, and I should have. Um, Kate sentenced the gift of sensual thoughts and desires when she senses a neighbor Nathan could be dangerous, but he has a secret gift too. It's about to let loose. So that was on the prowl. I, in no particular order here, although I was trying for alphabetical order and it just didn't work out that way. Um, Bitten, book one, Meet the Women of the Other World. Elena Michael seems like the typical strong and sexy modern woman. She lives with an architect boyfriend, writes for a popular newspaper, and works out at the gym. She's also a werewolf. Stolen. 33-year-old Elena Michaels came to terms with her feral appetites and claimed this proud identity of a beautiful, successful woman and the only woman female wolf. In Stolen, on a mission for her own elite pack, she is lured into the net of ruthless internet billionaire Tyrone Winslow who has funded a bogus scientific investigation of the other races and their supernatural powers kidnapped and studied in his underground lab deep in the main woods. These paranormal witches, vampires, shaman werewolves are then released and hunted to the death in the real world video game. I don't think these are... These are the witches. She did a witches thing too. So we'll do these at another point. Um, Dime store and industrial. These are not part of the wolf series. Okay. Um, I still can't find. All right. I missed one. I know she's here. Oh, here she is right in front of me. All right. Ilona Andrews. Oh, what did I do with? I also brought. Oh, before we go to uh, Ilona, I just wanted to. This is not one of the books we picked up today. It's up there. But I just wanted to. Um, We've done this. Uh, you'll have to check out my August 2008 Romantic Times book review. But I just thought I would uh, read. Uh, where is she? Urban. Patricia Wiggs, Cry Wolf. In a spinoff of her lot, lot, hugely popular Mercy Thompson series, the richly talented Briggs explores the adventures of werewolf enforcer Charles Koenig and his new mate. Oh. So that's this one. Um, and it got uh, four and a half stars. Um, uh, the first Alpha and Omega book deals with more details about werewolves and the Koenig family. Revelations about the past shock in this utterly gripping novel races to its climax, Briggs is a truly master storyteller. So we talked about this already. Um, so 
I just thought I'd bring that up in our werewolf situation there. Was it the only one in this one? Okay. So that's done. Just there. Okay. And she's mentioned twice. All right. Oh, she's mentioned in here too. Let's see which, which book it is if I have it down here. Um, Hunting Bread. Did I do that one? Yes, I did. Here we go. Hunting Graham. Got four and a half stars. Charles and Anna Cornick are back in the latest Alpha and Omega novel. And this time they're forced into the most hazardous of occupations, politics. The timeline in this offshoot, but no less extraordinary series, runs slightly behind the Mercy novels. And its main focus is the world of werewolves. So, we read this already. So, I just thought you could get a little review from a third person. And if you want to see more, um, actually, we're going to be doing this next month. This is September 2009. So next week, you'll see this uh, magazine done in full detail. We'll be doing that book. Um, also, I don't... I don't think I have this one. Watch me find it. I should have put these books in order. Um, well, I'll come back to it to see if I come through it with this. Okay. Then we have... Oh, we did Alona. Uh, we did Kelly. Uh, we have... Cheyenne McRae. No werewolves allowed. Nick Sixth Sense tells her that life in the slow lane is, uh, as a half-human, half-drow private eye, Nix is the go-to girl for tracking demons in the night. So when several of New York City's werewolves go missing, alpha werewolf Dimitri Beecho hires Nix for the job, but this time she must leave the dark alleys and bright lights behind. Um... Anyways, oh, did we do these? Lord have mercy. No. Okay. So, Ilona Andrews. Magic Strikes. Drafted to work for the other of Knights of Mercy Aid, mercenary Kate Daniels has more paranormal problems these days than she knows what to do with. And in Atlanta, where magic comes and goes, like the ride that's saying a lot. But when Kate's werewolf friend Derek is discovered nearly dead, she must confront her greatest challenge yet, as her investigation leads her to the Midnight Games, an invitation-only, no-holds-barred, ultimate preternatural torment. She and Curran, the Beast Lord, uncover a dark plot that may forever face, alter the face of Atlanta's shape-shifting community. Magic Burns uh, as mercenary who cleans up after magic gone wrong, Kate Daniels has seen her share of occupational hazards. Normally, waves of paranormal energy ebb and flow across Atlanta like a tide, but once every seven years, a flare comes at a time when magic runs rampant. Now Kate's going to have to deal with problems on a much bigger scale. Magic Bites While the magic is up, rogue makes caster spells and monsters appear. While guns refuse to fire and cars fail to start, but the technology returns and the magic recedes an unprecedented predictably as it rose, leaving all kinds of paranormal problems in its wake. Okay. Um, uh, this is a series um, that I was gathering and then I gave up. And I gave them all away, and now I'm pissed off at myself for giving them all away. Because I never had a chance to... I was busy gathering this series, and I was going to wait till I gathered the whole... I read the first few, and I read this one. Um, but then I gave them all away, and now I'm pissed off because they're really hard to come by. Well, at least if you're waiting for them in thrift stores to show up. You can go online and purchase them all. Uh, this is the first in the series, the Bengal series. 
Mercury War. Um, it's got four and a half stars. Uh, as the newest chapter in Lee's scintillating breed series demonstrates, trouble is brewing, Ad adding political and social layers to these super supremely sexy action adventure tales gives them depth and continuity. For those who like their paranormal scorching, look no further. The lion, lion breed enforcer Mercury Warrant believes he lost his destined mate years ago. Due to his unique makeup and the violence he demonstrated upon her death, Mercury was given drugs to suppress his animal side. Uh, this hasn't been taking the drugs for years, hasn't been a problem until Feisty Rhea Rodriguez shows up. On the surface, Rhea's mission is to examine the sanctuary books for the Vanderbilt family, but her true mission is more serious. Someone is smuggling out dangerous information to pharmaceutical companies, and that leak must be plugged at once. Rhea knows all about Mercury and his mate, so despite the intense attraction between them, she doesn't want to get involved. Larley, and there's a huge, it's a huge series. You should check it all out if you're interested in hot and heavy, really hot and heavy uh, X-rated. And I've got another X-rated one that I'll recommend later. Um, so then we have, yeah, these are in the magazine. So let's see which one is here. Um, we did this in December, 2008. We covered this book. So please check out my flashback Monday for 2008. Um, so let's check. Oh, Douglas is in here too, but not this one. Um, let's see. On the Prowl. Uh, four stars. Round two of the offbeat first-person tale of Urban Werewolf series throws this game heroine headfirst into more trouble. Sophie's troubles, uh, struggles lead to a humorous yet slightly scary scenario, and Macaroni's storytelling ability ensnares the readers who will be climbing for round three. Aust Austin Werewolf Sophie Garu's plan to stay under the radar of Houston Werewolf Pack suffers a severe flow when she receives a summons to appear before them. As of late, things have been going well. Her witch mom is no longer suspected of murder, and Sophie has made partner at a prestigious accounting firm by landing a significant new client, Mark Sidney. Plus, Sophie's boyfriend, Heath, may have made a special jewelry purchase. Okay, and she appears in another book. Uh, this is March 2008, so this is obviously the first one. So I should have checked the dates on these to do these in order. But that's just me. Um, Howling at the Moon, four stars. This one werewolf who was very much in the closet and Macaroni's first-person chronicle of Sophie's attempts to stay there are highly amusing. This launch book of Supernatural Trilogy takes tales of urban werewolf as humorous and eventful as the heroine gamely struggles to keep her life on track. Setting up a romantic triangle also adds spice and interest to the series. Sophie Garu seems to have it all. A great job at prestigious accounting firm, a closet that rivals a Nordstrom showroom, and a boyfriend who isn't afraid to use the M word. And this, the uh, third one. Out, on the outside, Sophie Guru is living every woman's dream. She has beauty brains and a big time position in Austin's most respected accounting firm. Not to mention a very sexual, very successful new boyfriend. But there's one thing Sophie would rather keep under wraps. She's a werewolf. Okay, so that's that one. Oh. And I just knocked over my entire pile of books. Oh, okay. Um, we did a lot we did that. Um, honorable mention to Nancy Gideon. There's two. Detective Carrie. Cat Charlotte Casey is growing used to the secrets that came 
loving with the mysterious leader of a shapeshifter clan. But that doesn't mean she has to like it. She avoided complications of the heart all her life. But when it comes to irresistible maxima, she'll force the truth out of him if she has to. Time is almost up. Hunted by the deadly trackers, his nefarious father warned him about. Max is transforming into a preternatural force he can't explain, and Cece will never understand. He's tempting the dangerous limits of their love, but it's her curiosity that could get them both killed. Ah, New Orleans homicide detective Charlotte Casey is dedicated to bringing down the crime boss responsible for her father's murder. Using Jimmy Laguerre's mysterious and irresistible right-hand man is a dangerous gamble, and not only due to his reputation as a monster, more monster than man, but because her feelings for Max are complicated. And, uh, let's see if I can uh, get these in order here. Christine Warren, Wolf at the Door. Sylvia and Quinn didn't travel 3,000 miles from his native island and his wolf pack just to chase rapidly after the most delectable quarry he's ever seen. Quinn is an American on a mission to warn his other brethren of a shadow group willing to use murder and mayhem to bring them down. But one whiff of this fox woman's delicious honeysuckle fragrance and he knows that she is more than a colleague or a conquest. She is a mate. Anthropologist Cassidy Poe is a world-renowned authority on social interaction, but the overpowering desire she feels around Quinn defies every ounce of her expertise. Working by her side to uncover the other enemies poses risks she never expected to her own safety, to those she loves, and to her heart, On as every encounter with Quinn proves more blissfully erotic than the last. Uh, let's see. Um... Uh, I don't know which order these are in. I do apologize. Um, big round book. Missy Roper's fantasies have resolved around Graham Winter since the moment they met, but the imposing leader of the Silver Black Werewolf Clan always seemed oblivious to Missy's existence. At least he was until Missy collides with him at a party and then abruptly runs away, arousing Graham's interests and desires. A white light covered in darkness. Noah Baker never wanted to betray the others, but if his military commanders want him to covertly investigate a lupine scientist whose extraordinary research on sensory perception of werewolves could be used to develop werewolf sharp sensors in human soldiers, Noah must oblige, even if it means deceiving the woman he desires the most. Renny Landruff is on a wolf on the run, pursued by shapeshifter stalkers and slobbering pack of killer coyotes. She is forced to flee her job as librarian to sign sanctuary in the wooded hills of Alpha, Washington, a well-secluded safe space for trouble shifters. Alpha is Rennie's last hope, but the first person she meets there is a gorgeous alpha male with fiery eyes, fierce tattoos, and one ferocious appetite for her. And, uh, born to be wild. I couldn't get the, the price sticker off. It's kind of glued. Um, teaming up with ferociously sexy Eli Pace, a full-time chef and part-time wearline. Josie tries to contain the shape-shifting problem before it spreads like a virus. But when more shifters get infected and struck in their animal forms, the fur really begins to fly. Josie and Eli have to find cores first before the whole town goes to the dogs. Okay. Uh... Rebecca York. Private investigator Ross Marshall has a special talent for tracking, a talent that has helped him locate missing persons when the police trail has gone cold. Now his current case has led him to a body buried in an isolated rural area and a serial killer who's looking for a new victim. But while gathering evidence for the police, something goes very wrong. 
the last thing genetic researcher Megan Sheridan expected was to discover her client shot and unconscious. Wash Marshall had requested her to run genetic samples on him, but instead of taking blood, Megan found herself tending his wounds. Although frightened by the secrets he, she knows he is hiding, Megan is compelled to him by a force she can't explain or resist. Ross tries to deny the ancient instincts climbing for him to take Megan as his mate, for to do so would sentence her to a lifetime of sorrow. Hmm. Edge of the moon. The first person to disappear was an older woman, then it was a child, then a teenage boy. When Catherine Reynolds' tenant and friend goes missing, she has no idea that her vanishing can be part of a larger sinister pattern. But the moment she meets Detective Jack Thornton, time, to, time seems to stop literally. The attraction between them is so strong and undeniable, there's always something dangerous about it. Let's do these real quick. Witching Moon. Nature's refuge preserved deep in the southern Georgia swamp was a place steeped in superstition and legend and death. The previous head ranger ended up dead, but werewolf Adam Marshall is ideally suited to explore the park and investigate its dangers. But in the still of night, a mysterious fire burns and even Adam's highly honed instincts are disoriented by the thick drugging smoke leading to near disaster. And the last Johnny Marshall spent his life looking for trouble into a bar brawl left him half dead. Needing a fresh start, the young werewolf headed west and changed his identity. As Sam Morgan now, he just dedicates his life to protecting the environment and steals from those who abuse the land. His latest target is a lumber baron, but before Sam has a chance to implement his plans, he encounters the most beautiful woman he's ever seen. The problem is he's the lumber baron's daughter. Okay. We did the best we could. Okay. Lori Handelin. Blue Moon. Officer, uh, Minnewa, Wisconsin is under siege, but not by the usual summer tourists. The area's normal shy wolf population has begun stalking human prey, and the victims have been disappearing over something is happening in the woods, something no one can explain. Officer Jesse McQuaid has plenty seen plenty of years on the force, but nothing as intriguing as the gorgeous naked man she encounters while tracking a rogue wolf. Professor Will Coyote is a Native American archivist. He is also the only man capable of distracting Jesse from her work, and for a cop, distraction, no matter how pleasurable, can be deadly. It's against Judge Jesse's better judgment to accept Will's help in investigation, yet soon she finds herself doing exactly that and more. Will's dark, penetrating eyes are see into a part of Jesse's soul that she never knew existed. It's exhilarating and terrifying. Now as the town's deepest secrets come to light, no one is safe, not friends, lovers, or strangers. And we'll just do um, book two, Hunter's Moon. Lee has has been called to Wisconsin for something big. As long as it means killing fanged and furry demons, she's up for it. But the worst is yet to come because something stronger and smarter than the average beast is on the prowl and it's doing Lee's work for her. Intoxicating and intriguing, Damon Fitzgerald is making Lee question her vow never to let another man better. I'll see. Uh, Dark Moon. Dr. Elias Hanover quite literally lives for her job since quitting world would mean meeting a silver bullet with her name on it. She works alone, struggling to unlock the mysteries of an affliction that should only exist in nightmares. But Alois knows from personal experience just how real it can be, because the first time its deadly power pulsed through her veins was the last time she saw the love of her life. Interesting. And, uh, I don't, did we do these? No. Okay. Eileen Wilkes, Tempting Danger. Will Yu is a San Diego police detective investigating a series of grisly murders that appear to be the work of a werewolf. To hunt down the killer, she must infiltrate the clans. Only one man can help her, a werewolf named Rule Turner, a prince, the Lupi, whose charismatic presence disturbs Lily. Rule has reasons for his own for helping the investigation, reasons he doesn't want to share with Lily. Logic and honor 
You man, she keep her distance, but the attraction between them is immediate and devastating and beyond human reason. This was a good series. Um, Will has a kid too. This, I actually remember this entire, I remember this series. It was a good series. It takes them a while. They fight their attraction. It's, it's, it's irritatingly slow. Um, touch sensitive FBI agent Lily Lou and a werewolf bond maid are recruited by the Secret Service to help identify elected officials who have accepted demonic packs. She's married to everybody. Uh, rule. Former homicide de- cop Lulu has a lot on her plate. Then there's her sister's wedding, a missing magical staff with unknown powers, and her grandmother's sudden decision to visit the old country just when Lily could use a little advice. Maybe she should turn to the man she's involved with, but for all the passion that flares between them, she really doesn't know Rule Turner. And he's got some secrets. And. We'll do an honorable. Uh, I forgot to do the. Uh, what was this one? Uh, I skipped this completely. It's okay. We'll just do it. we'll do this one now. Um. So. Uh, Carl Nielsen Douglas. It was the revelation of millennium, which is where with vampires and other supernaturals are real. Check it out. All right. And oh, this one. I think this is what's covered in here. Okay. The walk on the wild side. It got four and a half stars. Big cats are front and center in the fifth chapter of Women's Other Series. The hero, her, likable heroine is charming and tough and attributes attributes the need to survive in her new world. The politics of family and uh, greed are what make this book tick. A car accident triggers an other shift or change in Tennessee librarian Kitty Sugarman, who until that moment had no idea that her missing biological father was a lion shifter. Martin Lowe is the powerful Felix of the Red Rock Leos. He is also dying of cancer. With that in mind, Martin instructs his second-in-command, Mark Stewart, to handle the arrangements for meeting Martin's long-hidden daughter. Small-town girl Kitty is no pushover, which is good since there are several disgruntled relatives eyeing both Martin's succession and his money. And uh, one bite with a stranger. When Megan resists... Oh, this is a vampire. Oh, so it's a vampire, but this is werewolf. Uh, she writes both. So I think that's it. I think we have covered all of them. So we did Patricia Briggs, Alona Andrews, Carrie Vaughn, Eileen Wilkes, Kelly Armstrong, Laura Lee, Carl Nelson Douglas. Oh, I missed Allison Chase. I see it's up there. Uh, Nancy Gideon, Larry Handelin. Oh. J.D. Tyler, Savage Awakening. After a mission goes horribly wrong, Eric Savage is taken prisoner, turned to the brink of despair. He makes a stunning discovery. His pack mate, Michael Chase, who was reported dead, is a fellow captive. Equally shocking is that when the Alpha team arrives in full rescue mode, they are accompanied by a woman, an absolute stunner with sable hair and a spine of solid steel. LAP officer and psychic dream worker Rowan Chase has priority, his brother. Micah recovery, still she can't help but be drawn to Ari, the ruggedly handsome wolf shifter. Black Moon. Ever since he saved Dr. Mackenzie Grant's life, panther shifter and sorcerer Karen Black has had trouble keeping the beautiful doctor out of his thoughts and his heart. The brush with death awakened in a tense passion between them, one that for time has a notorious loner getting his guard. When the Alpha Pack battling an evil fae who was slowly gaining control over Kaylin's mind, Kaylin can no longer trust his own actions, so he breaks up the affair with Mackenzie in order to save her life. Primal Law. After a massacre decimates his team and leaves him crippled, Jackson Law must learn how to fight and battle the anger and guilt overwhelming him. 
On the run from her employer, brilliant lab assistant Kira Locke has evidence that leads the Alpha Pack on a hunt to someone targeting human civilians with pay abilities. And I don't think we did these. These will be the last ones we do. Um, uh, Kitty and the Midnight Hour. Kitty Norville is a midnight DJ for Denver radio station and a werewolf in the closet. Stick of lame song request. She accidentally starts the Midnight Hour, a late night advice show for the supernaturally advantage. After desperate vampires, werewolf and witches across the country begin calling in to share their woes, her new show is a raging success. And, uh, uh, the Midnight Low, Kitty Raises Hell, Kitty Goes to War, Kitty and the Silver Bullet. Kitty is, Kitty's radio show is popular as ever, and she has a boyfriend who seems to understand her. Can she finally settle down to a normal life, not if this is just the calm before the storm? When her mother falls ill, Kitty pushes back to Denver and right back to the abusive pack of werewolves she escaped a year ago. To make matters worse, a war is brewing between the city's oldest vampires, threatening the whole supernatural community. Though she wants to stay neutral, Kitty is again drawn into a world of politics and violence to protect her family, her lover, and herself. She'll have to choose sides and maybe become what she hates most, a killer. And, uh, Kitty and the Dead Man's Hand. Already the alpha pair of Denver's wealth werewolf pack, Kitty and Ben now plan to tie the knot human style by eloping to Vegas. Kitty is looking forward to sipping fru fru drinks by the pool and doing her popular radio show on live TV. But her hotel is stocked with werewolf hating bounty hunters. Elsewhere on the strip, an old school magician might be wielding a, as the real thing the vampire community is harboring a dark secret, an irresistible star of suspicion, animal actress determined to seduce Kitty Sin. Never has never been so wild, and this werewolf has never had to fight hard to save not only her wedding but her life. So there you go. Patricia Briggs, Aluna Andrews, Carrie Vaughn, Eileen Wilkes, Kelly Armstrong, Laura Lee, Carol Nelson Douglas, Nancy Gideon, Lori Handel, and JD Wyler, Karen McKinney, and others. So please hit the like and subscribe. Let me know if you, you find any of these authors good. And uh, I hope you enjoy them all. So please hit the like and subscribe. Let me know I'm doing a good job. I've got to put all these away now. I've got to put all these away. All of these got to go back up there. All of these books I've got to put away. I've got to put away. I've got to put away. So I hope you were able to find, if you like the Patricia Briggs, if you like any of these other books too. So thank you very much. I hope this was a good if then for you. Thank you.